On the minimum wage, if I may go to first 5057, and that's a 1030 minimum wage. Here, as you've heard earlier, this would be the fourth or the fifth consecutive increase because, again, we're doing it in July, uh, several months from now, so it'll be have five straight years. It's roughly a 40, 41 percent increase in the minimum wage over this period of time. Uh, when one looks at the literature, the national literature on this issue, there seems to be a growing feeling that in the short run there is a negative impact on employment. But overall, as the change of the minimum wage moves out, there seems to be a balance. However, but one looks at the indices, the pieces of it, when one looks at the 1050 going up by the 90 cents, there is an impact, and we provide sites for you for each of these, that there is a rising consumer price. There's a reduction in creation of new jobs. We have talked about eliminating jobs, but we are finding that the literature now says jobs are not being created because of the minimum wage. The increased rate of firm death, companies that are labor-intensive go out of business. Companies that are capital-intensive come back in, so we are losing companies. Uh, the other is the increase of, let's see, the, the increased rate of firm death. And the other is, that, for instance, there was a Federal Reserve study that went after that particular issue. So it's a nonpartisan organization that looked at the firm death and firm growth. So by increasing the minimum wage, we have a major impact upon small companies. They go out of existence, and what comes back is capital-intensive and not labor-intensive. The Department of Labor and Training is, it estimates about 78,000 people will be impacted by the uh, going to the 1050. Currently, 40,000 currently uh, earn the minimum wage. And here's what we tried to do, and this was a little harder for us, and so was what is the cost? What are we talking about the cost to employers for this? If you just did 40,000 employees times 90 cents times 30 hours, that's a million one per month or per, per month to pay for this. I'm sorry, I made my numbers right. It's per week. Uh, so we're talking about a $1.1 million per week if you took the 40,000 people eligible at the current minimum wage and you move them to 1090, it's over a million dollars a week. Now, we think that that's a high number. That's why we, we're saying it. this is a pure calculation. I don't know what the cost would be. No one has ever done the analysis about what that increased cost would be to companies within the state. We do know that it's going to increase the cost of, of doing business within the state. And as I indicated earlier, we are one of the worst states right now for cost of, of doing business within the state. This would add on the minimum wage increase. And again, one of the items you've heard on restaurant business, if you look at the minimum wage increase, it affects three industrial sectors <coughs> the most within Rhode Island. And just so you know, the three that are in fact impacted is one is the fastest growing, the third fastest growing, and the tenth fastest growing industry in Rhode Island. So we are going to put an additional cost on those industries which are the fastest growing in Rhode Island. And if you look at the combinations in food, that is the fastest growing. It is the third largest in Rhode Island. If we look at the health care and social, it is the third fastest growing, and then retail trade is the tenth fastest. So we would be applying the minimum wage to the fastest growing and the most important companies that are growing in Rhode Island at the time that they're growing. And again, on small businesses make up a large portion of it, and we find by literature that small businesses are most impacted by the minimum wage. And so our growth pattern of small businesses would be adversely impacted by it. And on competitive, right now we have the 10th highest minimum wage nationally of 27 states with a minimum wage over the federal one. Going to 1050 would make Rhode Island tied with California with the third highest nationally after Mass in Washington. So we would be, in a sense, second to those three would be the third highest. When I go on to the other one, when we go up higher, we'll be the highest in the nation if we go to the structured stat to go to $15. So when one looks at the comparison, we would be one of the highest on it. One of the issues that we looked at is comparability of the minimum wage to the medium wage within the state of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And here we found a very interesting fact, and you'll find it in the, our written testimony, is our minimum wage is higher, the percentage of the median wage within Rhode Island, than it is in Massachusetts. So their median wage is higher. Their minimum wage is lower when you do the two comparison. So our minimum wage is a relationship to what everyone else makes, the people pay it, is higher in Rhode Island than it is in Massachusetts. If we do this increase, it will even be worse. And so you'll see that we feel that the wage amount is not necessary or not necessary now. 
If I may just go quickly to the $15 one, and here, one of the things we found in the literature review and the economic review is the order of magnitude of change. The market somehow takes into consideration small changes in the minimum wage. It factors it into the discussion. I think you've heard a couple employers who pay over that now. So effectively, it doesn't have the hard rush that you would have, except when you get into the larger increases, and that would be on Bill 5595. And here you would have more adverse impact because of the shock and the increase, and the marketplace would not have had the ability to absorb those increases. And so we believe for that it would be even worse if we began this slow escalation of pricing. And then again, if you looked at the tip wage, one of the items that we looked at the tip wage, it would be a 285 percent increase in the tip wage. So we believe that we'll throw these together when one looks at the cost of doing business and the business arrangement we are in Rhode Island. All three of these uh, are, I guess, opposing to all the things that we've been talking about improving the business climate within Rhode Island. If we look at most of the legislation on today, it's, it's the antithesis of trying to improve the business climate in Rhode Island. And we believe these would go in the wrong direction, Mr. Chairman, and I'd be pleased to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions?